Hello there and uh, welcome back. Um, so today we're going to be talking about arrays and how to use them. And arrays are um, a specific type of um, object that is in the class of container types. And so these are objects that allow you to contain other objects. And so array is just one specific type of container. And so we're going to be looking at that. So let's get started. I want to start this section by proposing a problem. Suppose that we're asked to record the uh, temperature um, at eight, three times a day, at 8 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 6 p.m., or you want to do it. I'm sorry, somebody asked you, but let's say. Um, you're interested in those temperatures because 8 o'clock is when you're about to leave to work and you want out to be dressed, and 12 o'clock is when you get out for lunch and you kind of want to know what the temperature is like going to be then, whether you should go out or not. And 6 o'clock is when you kind of on your way home and you would like to know what the temperature is like at that time. And so you're going to do this daily. So uh, we know there's seven days in a week. So we're going to say that oh, on day one, you know, these are the readings that you have. Uh, day two, these are the readings you have and so on and so on, right? And so those are our readings there. Not a problem. We're going to need to record values um, for different days and multiple values per day. So let me introduce you to an array, and this is my definition. An array is a name given to a collection or set of values. And we know what a value is. A value is the thing that you get, the results you get from a computation or evaluation of an expression, right? And we haven't talked very much about the formal definition of an expression, but you kind of know what an expression is. And so what are the benefits? What does an array give you? An array gives you the ability to group um, related values um, together. And so those values don't have to be the same type, so it doesn't have to be all integer or anything like that. But if a set of values kind of go together, it might make sense to keep them together. For example, um, a person's age, name, phone number, social security number are all values related to that one person. It might make sense for you to be able to group those things and keep them together. And so that's what an array would allow you to do, even though there are different types of values. So let's revisit the values we collected for, you know, our temperature readings. And um, you can look at these and you could see immediately that there's some natural grouping that's happening here, right? You have the three values readings per day. Um, and then you can even see another grouping, which is um, a grouping of the weekly reading, right? You take all the seven daily reading and that's form another group, which is a weekly reading. And you can keep going on. You can say, well, I have monthly reading and yearly reading, and you could just keep um, nesting as much as you like. So this idea of grouping things just follows sometimes um, very, what say, obviously, um, when we have certain type of problems that we need to just group values, and the array gives us the ability to do that. So the only thing seem to be missing now is we see a usage for for array already, but is how do you use them? And so. Here's uh, the syntax, and uh, I'd say the compact form of it is very simple. You have a left square bracket and a right square bracket enclosing those values, which we get to call element. Each one of those values we call an element. And so you just come and separate them in as many as you like. And then there's a more formal definition that looks like this new array and then the same thing. Um, as you can see, the first one is shorter and, co and it's compact. So really no reason, and they're exactly the same, no difference between the two. And there's really no reason for you to be using the second one unless you really like Titan or something like that. But other than that, um, it's, it's the same. And the second one is basically, you know, just making it, um, uh, let's say, explicit that you're creating an object, just like when we saw when we started talking about values, the example for a date. But we'll ignore that. We'll revisit all these. And so let's just um, go look at some code and see how you can use this and um, see what we get, right? So, so let's go look at code. Um, I've written down those numbers that we had for the um, temperature of the day for each day. And so I assigned them to different variables. So for day one, I have the three temperatures. And again, we're going to say that oh, this is for like 8 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and about 6 p.m. in the afternoon. Those are the temperatures you care about. And so that's all you need to do is quite literally write them down almost, of, almost the same exact way that you would probably write them in a sentence. Uh, except, you know, and with common between. And so um, there they are. And if we can, and I'm going to print out one of them. 
and so JavaScript understands how to print arrays and we'll see um, if I do this and I run it you can see it pretty much looks exactly like I've written it up here and um, the other example is how we can use um, nested arrays and so since I already had day one day two and all this other stuff um, these other arrays individual arrays I can create even a new array or another grouping so I could have the daily grouping and then I got a grouping for weeks and so this is a week one grouping and I could you know populate it with the um, temperatures for those days and so now when you might notice something here I put this backslash and don't spend too much time thinking about it when you run your, your example you can run it with and without it and notice a difference but basically I mean it's insert a new line and that's just to make it look a little bit nice and so if I change this to example two and run it now you see it's a week one temperature readings um, and then you have the individual daily array but then they're wrapped or further grouped by this bigger um, by this outer array and that's enough for this video uh, we're still not finished with array yet so we will continue in the next video talking about how to access individual elements how to call some functions that are provided on arrays and so on we'll do more but for now this is enough and so what have we learned today we learned um, array allow you to group related values and how to create them is fairly simple and we also learned that java console can print out arrays and you'll uh, that might seem obvious in this language, but for some languages, it, it doesn't work that way. So that's why I mentioned it. All right. So take care and see you in the next video.